All right, so what we've been doing is uh, we've been exploring some of the customize, customization features of the theme, and we talked about how there's a whole world of themes out there. Um, we've been looking a little bit at some of the um, uh, widgets. We don't have that many to work with. We just have the basic WordPress installation. We have the text widget, which is one of the good uh, widgets. If we go back to our dashboard, Hover your mouse over plugins and select installed plugins. There's a whole system here of plugins. WordPress is software that's about a little bit over 10 years old now, I believe, or maybe just celebrated 10 years. WordPress has been around a while. Um, and it was designed in the beginning to be sort of like modular, where people can add to it. The, the core WordPress team, the company, um, works on WordPress and puts out security updates, new features and such. But other people are free uh, to add to it, like themes. The, the WordPress parent company puts out a brand new theme every year, with the year on it, 2015, 2016, 2014. But there's so many themes out there. And Plugins are also things that other companies create for, for more features. Like the built-in backup tool that WordPress has is pretty bad. I don't even mention it. I don't even use it. It's not that good. We have a better backup tool, Duplicator. It's what allowed us last week to make a perfect copy of our site. We'll do it again at the end of the day. It would it's what allowed us also to bring the site back to life, which we will do in two weeks when part two of the class rolls around. And we added Duplicator, but what was built in was a plugin called Akismet and one called Hello Dolly. Now, I haven't really been writing notes all day, but I will bring up my notepad to write some notes here about plugins. This is a big topic. I'm going to say plugins. Our mini apps that add more features to WordPress. Built in our Akismet and Hello Dolly. Akismet is a plugin that helps you manage your spam better because. WordPress makes it pretty easy to um, let people comment on your site. If you're going to be using WordPress more as a blogger, you want people to comment, give you feedback and such on your posts. But it could be very easy for a spam bot to find your site and just add spam, spam, spam to all your pages. It'll fill it with links over to their shady websites. A Kismet then is a plugin that helps you prevent spam. Requires a WordPress.com account. A free WordPress.com account to function. Notice right now A Kismet is, is not active. The only one that's active is the one in blue, duplicator. This says activate Akismet, activate Hello Dolly, deactivate Duplicator. At the top it also shows you currently have three plugins. One is active, two are inactive, one needs an update. We'll have a whole discussion on updates on the advanced class, on the next class. But in order for you to fully activate and use Akismet, you need a free WordPress.com account. And that's not a big deal at all. My company, when we get hired to do a website, we build them a website in WordPress. We also set up a bunch of plugins that I'll be talking about, recommending to you. And one of them is Akismet to help us prevent the spam. So what we do, one of us in the company logs into our WordPress.com account and then links Akismet with, the, with our WordPress. Um, it then gives it the ability to prevent the spam. Uh, it's a lot of people, millions of sites all over the world use Akismet, so it's like a global spam killer app. 
that they all share this information about this is spam, so we'll automatically block it on your site. You've discovered some new spam, we'll help another site block it. So that's a good one. Hello Dolly. Delete ASAP. As soon as possible. It's not a useful plugin. It's not for anyone except like an a plugin developer. If I wanted to invent my own plugin, this is sort of like a template to help you understand how plugins work so that I can create a plugin and either give it away or sell it. For us regular people that we've just got a website, we're trying to sell a product and such, or we have a blog, this website is, I mean, this plugin is really not useful at all. And it's taking up space on your site and resources. So if I no longer wanted this plugin, what do you think we do? Delete. So I will do that. You can do that if you'd like, but I'm going to select delete. It'll confirm you're about to delete this. You sure you want to delete the file. Tell us the function to teach you how to delete That's a good point. To teach you these basic things. Delete a plugin, activate it, and so forth. Uh, the actual official inventor of WordPress is Matt Mullenweg. That's his plugin, and we're about to delete it. And he's okay with it. Uh, but here we are going to confirm. Do you want to delete this or not? This is, there's no undo for this. Also, if you had this plugin and you customized it and you delete it here, you'll have to install it again, and all your settings are gone. Again, this one's not a big deal, so we will say yes, delete it. We've got these two. So Akismet and Hello Dolly are built in. Plugins are many apps that add more than one feature. That are features. You can have more than one plugin installed. You can have more than one plugin active. You can have multiple plugins addressing the same issue, but not recommended. There's a plugin to add the Twitter feature to your home page. There's also 500 other ones that do the same thing. So I don't recommend to have more than one plugin doing the same thing. They're trying to do the same thing and could conflict with each other. Plugins often require setup. So you install a plugin, there will be some sort of uh, buttons here on all your install plugins. They'll be, you know, manage. And there's no consistency, unfortunately. This calls it manage. Other plugins might call it settings. Another plugin might call it options. But oftentimes there will be some form of configuration. Plugins often require setup. Plugins often require updates. Um, to be big discussion to do. Next class, we need to talk about updates. That's a big topic. We don't have time anymore to talk about it. Uh, but in short, uh, your computer itself, if you've got Windows or Mac or whatever, it often tells you, you need an update. Your phone, it'll often tell you, there's a new update. Everything has updates. Even WordPress, even plugins, everything about it has updates. The point of updates are for either to give you new features or to fix errors. To, sec to fix security issues, for example. So if there's a plugin that you downloaded a year ago and there have been no updates for it, worst case scenario is there's been a year for some hacker out there to figure out a problem with that plugin and find a way to get into your site. Someone could break into your site 
with an old out-of-date WordPress theme, with an old out-of-date plugin, or with many other problems. So this is also the possibility that someone wrote a plugin specifically that has a great feature, but hidden inside of it is some malicious code. That could happen also. We'll have a deeper discussion on it later, and that's why I'll mention a few plugins that I've used and recommend. I will say only have the minimum number of plugins you need installed and active. Because you can have plugins installed, like Akismet, but it's not active, it's not doing anything, but it's still installed and taking up resources. Akismet at the moment, even though we're not using it, is begging for an update. Do you see there? It says there's a new version. Get it. Even though we're not even we don't even have it on. We're not even using it. So you can download 20 plugins and maybe use two of them. But those other 18 are taking up space on your server and resources because every once in a while, and each plugin is different, every once in a while the plugin is the plugin is checking the mothership. Is there a new version? Is there a new version? Is there a new version? And then when there's a new version, it'll keep bugging you. There's a new version. There's a new version. So it's using up your resources. You only have the minimum that you need. Because each takes resources. Each slows down your site. Each makes your site potentially potentially uh, less secure. So it slows down your site. How much? It depends on the site and the plugins and a bunch of factors. But if you've got 20 plugins and they're all turned on, they're all, they've all got hundreds of lines of code trying to do something. And therefore, all together added up could be slowing you down. So only have the ones that you need to make your site run well. If you downloaded one to test and you didn't like it, remember to remove it. So WordPress has a way to go to create plugins, and I'm sure there's a document somewhere in the WordPress.org that has best practices for plugin designers. And I don't think a lot of people know about that or follow it because plugins also themselves are not very consistent on how they work. The duplicator plugin gives itself a brand new menu item right there. So. There's like three or four places, possible plugin locations. Unfortunately, not every plugin is going to make a nice little menu item on the side. So one could be new menu item, new dashboard menu item. Right here, I got a duplicator. Now, sometimes the plugin doesn't add itself on the menu on the bottom. I've seen plugins that add themselves at the top. I forget to look at the top, I assume at the bottom, and then I can't find the plugin. Oh, and it's at the top. So, new dashboard item, often at the top. I mean, often at the bottom. Sometimes at top. Another place where plugins could hide themselves or activate, install themselves, could be under settings. When we do the um, other plugins, we we might not see it right away here on the on the main menu. Another common place is settings. Under settings, you might have a new item here, often at the bottom, sometimes elsewhere. But I could say within the settings, so a sub item. 
of the settings menu. The plugin could show up there. It could also be a sub item of the tools menu. We have on the left side also tools. There's a couple of plugins that I like that show up here under tools. They're at the bottom. Um, those are the possibilities and that's that's a lot of possibilities and always they should always show also show up should always show up in the plugins all plugins screen so what I have open right there plugins installed plugins they'll show up here also So on the on the syllabus, uh, I added there a couple of plugins that I recommend. One of them is Duplicator. So recommended plugins. Duplicate Duplicator. To make perfect backups or archives of your site. It's also useful to migrate your site from server to server. Right now we're on the local host server, your personal computer. Later on we'll talk about uploading it to a real server. We'll use Duplicator as well. We can do it the opposite way. We do this all the time for our client. We get hired to work on a website that already existed. Someone else built it in WordPress, but now they've hired us to work on it. Right away, one of the first things we do, we log in, we install the duplicator plugin, make a perfect backup of the site, and then install it on our local computer on WAMP and work on it on our local computer to understand what the site has, what mistakes they made, what will improve, etc. Then we can work on it on WAMP, do what we need to, and then upload it back with Duplicator. And remember, there was that check mark at the beginning of the day that says, are you sure you want to run Duplicator uh, Duplicate Site? It's going to erase the old version. Well, we know what we're doing, so, so we'll do that. That's another way to use Duplicator. Make copies of the site to take them offline to work on them that way. We're going to look at this plugin right now, Jetpack. This is the Swiss Army Knife plugins. What do, what do I mean by Swiss Army Knife? Multifunction, multi featured, includes many uh, features like more widgets um, better security just lots of extra features uh, wordpress.com features if you get a WordPress.com site, its dashboard is a little bit different than ours. Its dashboard at WordPress.com has a few different items. Ours is WordPress.org, remember from the beginning. .com uh, is their version, .org is our version. So if you want some of these .com features, 
you activate Jetpack and you get more features. We're, we're going to install it right now and take a look at what it gives us. Under Plugins, Installed Plugins, click Add New. And that's, it's actually such a popular plugin, it's right here already on the Featured. But guess what? It's from the same parent company as WordPress, Automatic. The Automatic company makes WordPress, makes Jetpack, and some other ones. And so Jetpack is right here. Go ahead, click Install. It's going to connect to WordPress.org, you'll see up there. It'll set it up, and then you'll need to remember to activate it. It'll say successfully installed, but activate it, or it won't do anything yet. If you activate it, you have a brand new menu item at the top. Jetpack. In the plugin screen, we have Jetpack, Settings, Support, Deactivate, Edit. And we've got Jetpack. Improve your site with Jetpack. We have all of these features. Speed up your images. Protect from attacks. Monitor your site. All of these things. All of these things are free except for the ones that are marked as paid. But all of these you can get for free. Automatically promote your content. Manage multiple sites, etc. How does it all work? Well, you have to. Uh, it'll tell you somewhere here that you have to connect with, with, um, with, with WordPress.com. But you have all of these features. Make a contact form, uh, share, site verification, all of this extra stuff. That's a Jetpack plugin. Well, we'll go into detail with it later. Uh, but Jetpack is one of the ones that I install right away for a new client. It has all of these features. I do Duplicator, so we can make a copy of their site. Uh, backups. I, we do Jetpack, so we get all these extra features. There's another one I'll mention in a moment. Any, any questions on Jetpack? We, don't, we can't do mu too much with it right now. But notice all of these great extra features it comes with. Any questions on Jetpack? We're going to install another um, plugin. Go back to Plugins, Add New. Which one? This plugin that I'm about to talk about? Yeah. Yes. Um, we'll find it right here under let's add new plugin. And um, we have featured, we have popular, recommended, favorites. Let's look at popular. If you scroll down a, a few screens, you'll see a plugin called Yoast SEO. Looks like Toast. Yoast. It's probably more actually pronounced more like Yoast. Uh, but Yoast SEO. It says improve your WordPress SEO. Write better content. Have a fully optimized WordPress site using this plugin by Team Yoast. There are many plugins out there to help your SEO. This is one of them. This is the one I recommend, the one I have in the syllabus. So another recommended plugin is Yoast SEO to help set up your site for better search engine ranking. You build a great website, 
but no one's finding it on Google or Bing or Yahoo or AOL search or whatever. People can't find your site. You haven't engaged in SEO. Well, this plugin here is one of the many out there that will help you with that. In part two of the class, we'll get into more detail about it. And there's plenty of them out there. I'm going to write here, or all in one SEO pack. This is another one that does the same thing. But what did I say up here? Not recommended to have multiple plugins addressing the same issue. So I would not install Yoast and All-in-One thinking that you're going to get double SEO power. No, most likely it's going to conflict and make your site worse. Each one is trying to do the same thing, it could mess things up. So one or the other. I personally, because I put it in the syllabus, recommend Yoast SEO. I've used it most. Some of my colleagues have used All-in-One SEO pack and it works great. I haven't used it as much to compare the two. Maybe the all-in-one SEO pack has gotten better. But at Yoast SEO for me has worked really well for years. And that's what I'm recommending for the class. What do you recommend for a social media plug? There's so many different ones uh, on there, but I also, uh, if we look, Jetpack mm -hmm. has some social media sharing features in there. If you're looking in the Jetpack settings, all 28 features in here we have publicize some of these that are not activatable you need to first get the wordpress.com so for for most social media I like the built-in jetpack can't find it at the moment, but it's one of these. It's, it's, it should be publicized. Off the top of my head, I don't know. I have to look up what we've done for clients. There's so many different ones. Right. One works well for one particular client with some features. Some works well with another one. I just have one off the top of your head like you did for the SEO and the Jetpack. No, we're running a couple different ones on clients, so I always kind of get them mixed up a little bit. I want to, I, I have to look it up because there's so many that do the same thing. I don't want to say it's this plugin, but it's not actually the one that I meant, and then it's not working for you. So if you do click to activate Yoast SEO, remember to install, uh, remember to activate it, install it, then activate it. <coughs> what, the, what this does now, Yoast gives you a brand new menu item called SEO. We'll have time to look at it later, but under here we have all of these tools. Here's a little bit of social that you should look at, meta tags, sitemaps. And this plugin will also analyze your site. So at the very top, you have a brand new item there too. Do some keyword research, check the various settings of my site, are there any issues with my site? So this plugin is really good to help you fully optimize your site to get found. We'll talk in detail about it next class as our time is running short, but I would explore it. I would go to, you know, go to the Notice we have the dashboard of SEO. If you go look at the SEO dashboard, you're going to see a little tour, a little subscription to get up-to-date info. Client's telling me I've got a problem and an improvement. I've got on the side here, they're giving away their plugin, but they've also got a premium version that gives you 24-7 support. I don't know the price at the moment. You can look it up. Um, there's some training about that. So these plugins, you might say, well, well people give this away. What, what do they get out of it? Many plugins and themes operate under the freemium model. So I'm going to say here, free, premium, and freemium in the middle. A plugin 
or theme is totally free with 70 to 90 percent features. There are some that are completely 100 percent free. Premium, a plugin or theme which is paid, and that goes from like five dollars $200 per theme or plugin. Yes, you can buy a plugin that's $80 that does one specific thing. Uh, and this one's got with 100% features and tech support. Because you've got that plugin and you heard so much good about it, you install it and it doesn't work exactly how you thought. Or it conflicts with another plugin or theme or something. Who do I turn to? Well, you've paid for the plugin. The author most likely then will also give you tech support to help you fix this. Yes. Reminder: totally free. Uh, a plugin that is totally free. Yes, it's hard to talk and type sometimes. And under Yoast, is that to help or is it top help? Under where? Yoast. Top help to help you. Oh, yeah, to help. Yes. That's what I get for not using a word processor with spell check. Hmm. Freemium is in the middle. It starts off free and then to unlock more features and like tech support and such then you pay. So starts free, pay for more features, tech support. Again prices vary a lot. Um, one of my favorite plugins is Duplicator. There's the free version and the paid version. The paid version gives you much more features. I like it better than the free one. It's $40, one-time fee, and it works on three sites. Because some plugins, you install the plugin, and, it, and you only paid for one site. I have my bakery site, and I have my web design site. I would need to buy a license for the plugin for each site. And um, sometimes people don't, don't get that with with websites and such, they they see it as not real. They see it as a website, as pixels, as graphics. It's not real like this. I can tell this is worth five hundred dollars. It's tech. It's magical, and it has all of this. Five thousand dollars for a website? Yeah, for a nice middle of the road website. Seven thousand dollars? Eight thousand dollars for a full featured e-commerce site? Yeah, that's. That's common. $10,000? That's common. A $10,000 website. Not to show off, but in my company, we've worked to build $10,000 websites. So whenever you see these ads that say, a website for $250, I laugh at that. Because $250 is going to be so basic, not customized, not a lot of features, no tech support, and that's anyway a bait and switch for them to, for you to hire them to do more. So the $250 plus, a, plus 100 free business cards. You know, free business cards, but on the back it's got the ad of the business card company. So really, not to scare you off, but like a real web designer that has experience and such, they're going to be charging a few thousand dollars for a website, and it's it's normal, it's common. Working at a hundred dollars an hour in this business is common. Yes, you can get a twenty dollars an hour person, a fifteen dollars an hour person, a ten dollars an hour person to make your website, but you get what you pay for. So this plugin, like the duplicator one, is free. It works really well. But there are other extra features to pay for to give you more ability. And we'll talk about other plugins that I like also as time goes on. Those are the three that I want to mention for this class, which are the um, duplicator, Jetpack, and Yoast SEO. Any questions on these? As our time is running out, what I want to do is I want to make an archive of the site. I want to back up the site again. My site as it is, I'm going to make a copy of it. You should as well. We'll do it together, just one moment. And when we come back in two weeks, we're going to bring the site back to life and keep working on it, we're going to start to talk about the e-commerce plugin, 
the way to get e-commerce and such, and other features, intermediate to advanced, because we're going to have part two of the class next month, and we're going to take it from this point. So this will be then the way we look at our handout again. We did this last week, we'll do it again. We're going to do these steps together a few times, and eventually, in class, you're going to try to do these yourself first. So hopefully they'll stick, because you'll need to do this eventually when you're not in class anymore, and I'm not there to rescue you. So, we're going to try these together a few times. Take notes, watch the videos, because eventually you'll need to do this. So archive your site. We need to install the plugin. Check. It's already there because we did it previously, and it got saved in the archive. We have the duplicator button. So it says, you, ha you now have a new dashboard item, duplicator. Click it, and then we'll click Create New Tab at the top. So do you see you've got duplicator, menu item, click Packages. We have no backups. The one we did last week was deleted, remember? Remember early on in the day, once we resurrected the site, there was a button that said, clean up old backups, clean up old files. It says there's no backups. We deleted them. If we didn't delete that backup, it would have a list of more backups. That's up to you to decide to, to keep those backups or not. We'll click Create New on the top right. The package name should list today's date. You can change it if you'd like. With notes, you can add your own note. So the date, I'll leave it as is. It's got, uh, it's got the date. It may have one wrong date. The time zone's off on this thing. Don't worry. Uh, but what I would do is, on notes here, you've got a little button at the top right. Notes. A little box opens up to say, um, customized theme. This is what we did today. We customized the theme customize or created uh, two new menus. What else did we do? Um, edited widgets. Added two plugins. This is all optional, but this is useful because when you've got a lot of copies, a lot of backups, you they're going to be they're going to have a date, and you're going to forget what did I do on that site at that moment. What I also like to do here is add a note about what's next. In our case we still have work to do. So what we still need to do is add e-commerce plugin, write some custom code. We'll dabble a little bit in editing code, not a whole lot, but we'll edit a little code. These are a couple of to-do items. No one will see this except yourself as the administrator. You don't need to change any of these other settings. Just click Next. It'll scan your site. And if there are any problems here, you're either going to have a warning or an error. If you have a warning, you should be able to still proceed and make the backup. If you have an error, it'll stop you, and you have to fix the error before you proceed. All of mine say good, hopefully yours as well. Common problems are that you've got very large files, or that some of the names of your files are way too long. Those could give you warnings. Right now, the whole site in my case, it's about 41.6 megabytes. It's not so big. The database itself is about 800 kilobytes. 1,000 kilobytes is one megabyte. So it's less. The database is less than one megabyte, but all the pictures and the, and, and the text and the design, all of that's taking up about 46. The plugins, everything takes up space. Everything looks good here. If yours had a problem, we'll do lab time in a moment. Just click Build. As it's building, my handout says, 
leave the defaults, click next, in the scan complete, select build. If there's a problem, click to possibly read your, read your solutions. After the build is complete, you'll get two files, installer and archive, <coughs> exactly what we did last week. Remember, installer.php and some zip file that we do not need to unzip. You're going to click each one of those to download, they're going to download, and then we're going to make a new folder with today's date on the desktop. Move these files into the folder, and I'm going to put my folder in the network folder, and you're going to take it with you. That's saying here, mine's complete. It took about nine seconds. It'll take much longer on a real server, and it'll take much longer when with a bigger site. So if your site is, you know, 70 megabytes, 100 megabytes, 200 megabytes. It's going to take longer to make this archive. Click Installer to download it. I'm in Chrome, so it automatically simply downloaded here in the corner. If you're in Firefox, it'll probably give you a big download arrow on the top right corner. If you're in another browser, it may first pop up and ask you, save it or open it. You want to save it. You click Archive. Again, in mine it just downloaded right away. On yours it might say Save it, or it might say Open it. You want to save it. And these get saved, in my case, to the desktop. See, on my desktop I have Installer. This is going to have the same name as last week, install. But then the zip file is going to have today's date and some other unique identifier. Archive. These two files are the perfect copy of your site. My handout says make a folder with today's date and put both of those files in there. So I have at the top new folder, or you can right click on an empty spot, new. folder. Today's date. And I write it this way just to get used to the organization of, um, of the computer. Writing the dates this way will put all of the archives of 2016 together and then all of the archives from June or, or uh, June together. In, in order. If I were writing it as 0627, you know, as most of us in the U.S. grew up writing our address, our dates, it would put all Junes together, regardless of the year. So you're going to mix up June archives from 2016, 2015, 2014. If we write it this way, it'll put all year backups together, then months, then days. New folder, and I'm going to move the zip file and the installer file. Don't forget that. That's the instructions to bring it back to life. <coughs> move both of those into that folder. And now that folder has a perfect copy of what we did today. I'm going to put it into my flash drive to take with me. And I'm going to put a copy of it in the network folder in case you want a copy. When we come back in two weeks, we're going to use this archive to start our site back up from the moment we left it to start talking about our new topics. Yeah, I just put it in there also. 627. When we come back in two weeks, we're going to do the website resurrection again. Remember, we did local up on the address, localhost slash 2016 slash installer.php. In two weeks, it's going to be localhost slash 2016 slash install. We'll do it together. You can give it a shot. You can watch my video again. You can give it a shot at home. We'll do it together in about two weeks when we have part two of the class. If you didn't quite get it to work here, we're going to do lab time in just a quick moment. Any general questions on anything we talked about? today or in the class or a future class. Alright, so we'll have a little bit of lab time. Uh, thank you for coming and see you in two weeks.